nanohub.org. Online simulation and more for nanotechnology. Thanks everyone for going. I'm really looking forward to today's uh, seminar. Um, we have Mel Cassette here from Edmonds Community College, uh, Greg Kepner, who is from the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center and used to be a professor at Indian Hills Community College, and uh, Elaine Kraft, who is from Mentor Connect, and they're going to be discussing uh, mentoring, uh, what Mentor Connect is, and, and how the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center can mentor you in writing ATE. Uh, grant proposals. So, you know, thank you uh, presenters for coming and uh, looking forward to hearing your um, your presentation. Good day, everybody. My name is Mel Cosette, and I'm the PI for the Matt EDU Resource Center that's in Linwood, Washington. And as Jared said, we're going to have Elaine Kraft, who's the PI of Mentor Connect, with us today, along with Greg Kepner, who is the co-PI uh, with the MNNT, the Micro Now Technology Education Center. We are truly, uh, as a uh, Jared said we are truly Zooming everywhere because Elaine is in South Carolina, uh, Greg is in Iowa, and I am in Washington State. Billy is in Arkansas, who's helping support this, and, um, and Jared is in California. So we are truly a, a national presence today. So um, next slide, please. So our agenda is going to be to two-part. It will be introduction to the NSF ATE program. The NSF is an agency, and opportunities for the uh, NSF ATE grant funding, small grants, to, which is for those new to ATE. We'll talk a little bit about the solicitation, NSF 18-751, which is has uh, submittals, proposal submittals due on October 1st, 2020. Then we'll go into part two, which will be the Mentor Connect opportunity, and we'll be talking about mentoring and technical assistance, application and selection criteria and deadlines for submittal and success rate. And we also want to leave time for questions, so we'll be kind of going through this, and we have the chat open, so if people have any questions, please let us know. First thing we want to do is talk about our uh, our system or our structure. We have Dr. V. Celeste Carter who is our NSF ATE program director. She leads the program. And for those of you who have experience with other grant uh, organizations, funding organizations, ATE is a little different. We actually have a lot of access to our program officers. They're very available to us. And anybody who has an active ATE award will be assigned a program officer. And that program officer becomes like their liaison, their guide, for throughout their ATE um, life of that project. So the only time that changes is if there is a rotator, which is someone who comes in, assists ATE for anywhere between one to three years, and then goes back to their original institution. So um, there's a lot of structure. We can talk about that later. But just so you know, you do have people that are there to help you and assist. Um, ATE is also very interested in outcomes and impacts. and and what changes have occurred as a result of the activities of the project that you submitted and were funded for. So it's not like DOL, for those of you who had Department of Labor grants, it's not just about numbers, it's about impacts. And it's about um, uh, what, what changed, what, what was caused, and what is the sustainability of that project. Um, and also the picture you see on the, on the um, screen is is where NSF now resides, which is in Alexandria. It used to be uh, in Arlington, but a few years ago they moved due to safety and, and security issues. If you, you can visit this building, however, be prepared. Let your program officer know that you're going to be visiting if you choose to do so. They will alert security and then let them know the day and the time because it's almost like going through airport security and that's meant for a reason. So, um, Anyway, you'd have to show your ID, you'd have to show, um, you know, put your, um, your items into a scanner and that sort of thing. So with that said, um, the website is www.nsf.gov and we'll remind you of that later in the, in the presentation. And now I'm going to introduce Elaine Kraft, who will share information about, more information, I should say, about NSF ATE. Thanks, Mel. Um, I'm sure we can all agree that all technician education programs can benefit from having more money. There seems to be an endless need for money for providing faculty development, purchasing state-of-the-art equipment, 
recruiting, retaining and graduating more students, fostering greater diversity among faculty and students, and nurturing industry partnerships. So that's the why NSF ATE. An ATE grant is a great way to secure funds that you need to advance technician education programs. And the good thing about NSF ATE funding is that it encourages you to build on your success. It is a program that wants you to submit more proposals and implement multiple projects over time. Greg and Mel will now tell you a little bit about their extended engagement with ATE community that led them to roles as co-PIs with MNTEC. So Greg, why don't you get us started? Thanks, Elaine, I appreciate that. And uh, so I'm gonna just uh, share a little bit about my grant experience. Uh, I started off with a, with a planning grant as a PI years ago, and uh, I've, done, I've been working with a couple of different projects as a PI. Uh, I've been a PI of a regional center, and then also now a co-PI on, on two national centers, including the Mintech Center. And then uh, I've also served as a project evaluator. And I've, I've, a, a mentor with, with Mentor Links, and now a mentor fellow with uh, with the Mentor Connect, and we're here to help you get grant funding with NSF. We're here to help you when you when you write your proposal to to get the uh, get everything in there that you need to get it as correct uh, in the way that the NSF wants to see that proposal. Uh, to help you with ideas, to help you strengthen that proposal. And uh, again, we're we're here to help you with that uh, in any way that we can. And uh, so now, Mel's going to share a little bit about her experience with uh, NSF. Again, good morning. My name is Mel Cosette. I'm a co-PI on this particular grant on Micro Nanotechnology Education Center. I've also been the co-PI of the National Resource Center for Materials Technology Education. There's our website. I'm the PI for Technician Education in Additive Manufacturing and Materials. Again, there's our website. That is all around additive manufacturing. And just recently, we were um, awarded a new grant, a new project grant. It's called MATEDU Online Instructional Resources for Material Science Technology Education that will start on September 1st, 2020. So we have had a long history. Our focus has always been, though, material science and providing instructional resources and professional development opportunities to faculty and students, and, and also creating uh, and developing core competencies all around material science. We have been, I have been personally, steadily uh, and continuously funded since the year 2000. So if you do the math, that's been almost 20 years that we've been involved. I've also had Department of Labor grants um, and other grants, other grant funding agencies uh, that are like NIST, and some of the manufacturing institutes. So it's been, um, it's very uh, successful and it, it really helps the institution when you're trying to develop new programs or you have new ideas. And I am in my eighth year of working with Mentor Connect. So we are in our eighth cohort. Woohoo, Elaine, kudos to you. You've kept it going. So and as Greg said, we are here to help you and to assist you in any way we can. Um, I wanted to show the, the NSF website. I mentioned it earlier. It's uh, www.nsf.gov. And if you see over to the right, right below it, it says in red, Finding ATE. So if you want to look for the solicitation we're talking about, the solicitation is how, and it's how you write the proposal. It's the components that are needed for a successful proposal. And it's very well laid out. And Mentor Connect actually helps take you through the entire process and every component that needs to go into a successful uh, proposal. But also, this is a very helpful website. If you have an idea or you want to use keywords, you can go into this website and search to see if others have been awarded or have received funding for maybe a similar idea or a concept. So it's a very helpful and useful um, 
website, if you can just buzz around, you can go under funding and it will tell you the different directorates. It will, the, the awards is where you can find who has been awarded. And the site can be useful in, in many ways. And if you can't find it there, again, Mentor Connect has many resources that Elaine's going to talk about later that will help you get to those, um, those, uh, the information that you're looking for. So um, in talking about the ATE program, because we are specifically around technician education, it's the education of highly qualified science and engineering technicians for nanotechnology fields that drive the nation's economy. So the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center, which Jared Ashcroft, Dr. Ashcroft is the PI for, um, this is his focus and this is our focus as a team. And one of the things about ATE is that community colleges have leadership roles on all projects, on all centers and projects, if, if you will. In this case, Dr. Ashcroft is located at Pasadena City College. And so they are the host for this particular center. We can cover grades seven through 12, two and four year institutions can be supported as well. And one of the things that we like to to create is educational pathways that help teachers, counselors, guidance uh, folks, uh, guidance staff throughout either two-year, four-year, or high schools on what to take and what are the appropriate courses to uh, help them if the students are thinking about nanotechnology as a field. The other, the third leg that ATE really supports is partnerships, and that is with industry and economic development entities. And so we want to look at their motivating rationale and what are their hiring needs. We also want our students as they graduate, either from two years programs or high school into a two year program and even four years to make sure that there's jobs for them should they want to um, get into those areas. We also do curriculum development, which will be part of our, of our mission for our college. And, um, so those three are the basic components that make up a strong ATE project or an idea or concept. And now, Elaine, we're going back to you to share more information on ATE. Okay, thanks, Mel. Um, this slide is a visual that shows the tracks uh, as described in the current ATE solicitation. These opportunities expire this year with the October 1st proposal deadline. A new ATE solicitation will be published in 2021. There will be changes with the new solicitation, but the goals of the ATE program will remain the same. Funding opportunities in the new solicitation are likely to be similar and in some cases unchanged. In considering ATE program funding opportunities, you should always start small and work up to bigger grants. ATE centers are not for novices, and the National Resource Centers were previously funded as ATE centers. Coordination networks most often bubble up from previously funded work, and research projects are typically collaborations between university researchers um, or equivalent and experienced ATE grantees. When you know this, you can see that selecting the right funding track for a proposal can improve your chances for funding. As you complete, complete successive projects, and remember I mentioned that, that NSF wants you to continue coming in with proposals and having funded projects, your network and partnerships will grow, as will your experience in developing and implementing successful projects. Evaluation and evidence of outcomes and impacts, and Mel mentioned those, become increasingly important as you seek larger funding opportunities. Your results of prior support are so important that the ATE program requires that this information be presented first in any proposal, unless it is your very first one. If you have not had NSF ATE funding in the past, or the funding date of your last ATE grant was at least seven years ago, and that's from the date that you were funded, not when the project ended. Your college is eligible for the small grants for institutions new to ATE opportunity. You see the red arrow on this um, graphic about that. This funding track provides the best chance of funding. One of these small grants can fund the first step of a larger vision, and it's a great way to get started with ATE. Next, let's look at the funding track labeled projects. 
The ATE solicitation outlines many types of projects that may be funded in the ATE projects track. Projects may focus on one or several of these components. The ATE project opportunities highlighted in red are more targeted. These proposals are often ideal next step grants for colleges completing small new to ATE grants as they seek to move up to a larger grant. Since these are a subset um, of the projects, in other words, it's not a separate funding track, but just a subset of, of projects within that track, you will want to state clearly in your proposal the opportunity um, to which you are responding. Being clear in your project title and project summary helps NSF place your proposal for panel review. And it also helps reviewers know which criteria from the solicitation apply to your proposal. The instrumentation opportunity focuses on equipment acquisitions, but there is an expectation that a project in this category will also include curriculum modification with industry input and possibly faculty development. There needs to be a plan for effectively integrating new equipment into a program of study once it is purchased. The adaptation and implementation projects allow you to take advantage of good work developed and tested by others. You may use part or all of what someone else has done. The innovation in these projects is how the project plan will be altered to work for you in a new environment with a new set of students. ATE grantees in particular are great about sharing what they've done and it's always a good idea to use the originator as a consultant or perhaps a trainer for your adaptation. With all these grant ideas, it is recommended that you send a one-page concept paper to the program officer to get feedback as you begin working on your proposal. Now you've seen that there are all these wonderful funding opportunities within ATE. If you are eligible for the small grants, that's definitely the place to start. If you've already had one uh, or are not eligible for some reason, then the ATE projects track is what you want to be looking at and perhaps some of these subsets within that. Um, let's move on to the next slide. These are some of the things that you will receive from MentorConnect in collaboration with the MNTEC Center, okay? Um, these are resources that MentorConnect provides to help prospective ATE grantees and newly awarded grantees. So we don't just get you across the finish line for submitting a proposal and getting it funded, but we are going to help you launch those new projects once you get funded. Workshops and one-on-one -on -one mentoring are services provided to those who have applied and been accepted for a MentorConnect help. All other resources on the list are available to anyone working on a proposal or implementing a newly funded project. So you see, we have all kinds of things to help you. Next slide, please. I mentioned to you that the small grants for institutions new to ATE is definitely the person or, or the funding actually that you want to pursue if you are eligible. Um, I extracted from uh, some NSF um, information the funding rates across the agency. So you can see from this graph that the um, highly experienced later career faculty have greater success in receiving grant awards. However, the overall funding rate has been less than 25% for all proposals submitted since 2009. That means that when these proposals are submitted, about 75% of them are going to be declined or not funded. A notable exception is funding rate in the ATE small grants track. For those who have participated in Mentor Connect, the average funding rate over the past seven years for these grants has been 74%. Next slide, please. Mentor Connect cohorts are made up of colleges that are eligible for the small grants for institutions new to ATE. Again, that means that the college has never had NSF ATE funding before, or the last award date was at least seven years ago. 
Please note that this is specific to ATE. If a college has received another type of grant award, but not ATE, the college is still eligible for new to ATE funding. Also, branch campuses of larger institutions that have their own chief academic officer are eligible independent of the main campus of the college. Those leading ATE grants as principal investigators or PIs and co-PIs should be STEM faculty who have a role in the education of technicians. While a college is not restricted in the number of applications that may be submitted to NSF ATE in a single year, you can put as many grant proposals in as you can put together. A college may only submit one application to Mentor Connect for cohort funding. Next slide, please. Rural, Hispanic serving and minority serving institutions are encouraged to apply for ATE funding and for Mentor Connect help. Diverse STEM faculty are especially encouraged to participate on their college's grant development team. But we want all of you to become ATE grantees or to continue to be ATE grantees. So although we especially encourage these, please don't, if you don't fall in that category, don't think we're, we're saying don't come. We want you to come too. Next slide, please. A message we hope you take away from today's program is that Mentor Connect and MNTEC are partnering to support the advancement of technician education. We want you to apply for ATE funding to advance your programs, and we want to help you submit competitive proposals to increase your chances of receiving a grant award. To support you, we will be using a co-mentoring model. MNTEC team members and subject area experts will help you develop your grant proposal idea. And then Mentor Connect mentors will help you meet all of the requirements for successful proposal development and submission. This slide shows you how to access the application for Mentor Connect cohort mentoring. As Mel said, we have just, we're wrapping up our eighth cohort right now and the applications that are being received at this time are for our ninth cohort of potential grantees. We are currently accepting applications for colleges who will prepare small new to ATE proposals for October 2021 submission. That's October of next year. Please note the deadline. There are two components to the application. All instructions are on the website and you may call Mentor Connect anytime for assistance. Next slide. I've provided a lot of information, so let's quickly recap. Note that the deadline to apply for Mentor Connect cohort work on small new to ATE proposal Mentor Connect typically accepts 22 new to ATE college teams to work with each year, but we are prepared to accept more this year using the co-mentoring model with MNTEC. We accepted, uh, if accepted for the Mentor Connect cohort, you will be assisted for about 10 months, beginning in January 2021 and running through proposal submission deadline, which will be in October of next year. Workshops are provided only for teams in the new to ATE cohort. These are typically in-person workshops held at neat places like New Orleans, somewhere where it's a little, we do these in the winter, so it's usually a place where it's a little warmer. Mentor Connect supports participant travel to these workshops. In these times of COVID-19, however, some events are being provided virtually. The Mentor Connect expectation for participating colleges is simple. We want you to submit a proposal to the ATE program. That's your obligation when you join Mentor Connect. We want you to prepare and submit a proposal. Now I'm going to turn the program back to Jared so that he can describe the special way in which MNTEC can support you in preparing an ATE grant proposal. Oh, thanks. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so for anyone who does want to apply uh, within our Micro Nanotechnology Education Center grant, we do have 
um, writing stipends available. So anyone who would like to apply for NSF ATE uh, proposals has access to apply for these writing stipends. They're going to be $2,500 per project. So if there is multiple people working on the same project, you can choose how to split the, the stipend between you. Um, but if you are interested in, uh, in learning more about our, our participants support writing stipends, um, please send the email to micronanotech at pasadena.edu, uh, which we've put into the, into the, uh, the chat box. Um, and I think Greg and Mel are going to talk a little bit more about uh, the Micro Nanotechnology Education Center sort of mentoring activities um, next. Yeah, so, so at this point in time, uh, I, we've got all of our contact information listed on the, uh, on the slide, and y you can certainly uh, contact any of us, uh, but, um, you know, Mel and I are, are, going, are working together on this with Elaine to – uh, provide mentoring opportunities and uh, you got so there's a couple of websites there too the nsf.gov website ATE and then mentor connect as well uh, we're uh, ready and able to start helping people we've we've actually been helping one group already this week and uh, have another one uh, kind of in the in the hopper and we're anxious to uh, help more people um, as we go. Uh, so, um, and uh, keep in mind, if you want the mentor connect, uh, all that extra, um, help this year, uh, for the, for next year's solicitation, then, uh, you know, that deadline's coming up in October. Mm -hmm. If you have something come up, uh, say, uh, you know, so an idea pops into your mind in, you know, December, January, February, please contact us uh, because we'll be we'll be working throughout the year to to start to help people, um, and uh, I, Elaine likes to say that uh, really putting together a really good proposal is about like having a baby. It takes several months, like nine months, to really put a good proposal together. So, so the sooner you uh, talk to us, the better, and uh, we'll, we're anxious to to start helping you with that. Um, so we we would like to uh, um, I would ask Mel if you had anything else to add to this uh, or Elaine uh, if you have anything else to add. Um, otherwise, we'd like to open it up for some question and answers. Elaine. Um, yes, Greg. I'd like to tell everybody that on September the tenth there will be a more in depth webinar uh, on the ATE funding uh, opportunities and the Mentor Connect opportunity. Uh, so we'd be delighted to have any of you who would like to investigate this a little bit more to join us on September 10th. Uh, the webinar is free, but you do need to register. So you can go to the www.mentor-connect.org website. You'll see that address on the screen now. Um, scroll down on the homepage to upcoming events to register for that webinar. Uh, in addition, if you are not eligible for small new to A grant, ATE uh, funding, um, but perhaps you have a small grant now, um, then we do offer some mentoring support for those who would like to move up to a project grant. It's called Moving Up Mentoring. Um, another special mentoring service we offer is for those who have submitted a proposal, but were not successful. They got a decline is what it's called. And uh, what we have is second chance mentoring. And in that case, we will pair you with a mentor to rework and resubmit a first or second proposal that you've submitted that was not successful in being funded. So we have uh, multiple opportunities uh, for helping you. And um, I, I think if you don't take another message away from what we've all said today, it's that we we really do want you to be a grantee in the ATE program, and we'll do everything that we can to help you be successful in pursuing that funding. Thanks, Greg. I think, Thank you, Elaine. I think one thing I would like to add is as you do develop your ideas and your concepts and you share them with us, 
please um, rest assured that everything you, sell, you share with us is confidential because we do treat it as your idea, like almost like a patent. It's your idea. It's, it's what you're trying to put together. And, um, you know, so just let us know. And if it goes, uh, there's all of these options within Mentor Connect and within just Greg and I working with our team. The other thing um, that, that's an opportunity is we do have quite a few members on the MNNTEC team that are national as well. And they are SMEs, subject matter experts in nano, in education, career and technical, technician education, NSF that are working with us. So um, don't be concerned about the fact that there's nobody to help you. We have a lot of people to help so and, and assist us to hopefully get you where you want to go. Sure. I think that there's uh, questions on high schools and can high school teachers apply um, specifically or if there's STEM programs with certificate degrees, uh, what's the, how, how does that work with high school programs? Well, it, you need community college connection and leadership in that and Elaine, you might be able to give us more details on that. Uh, there's no restriction on who can actually submit the proposal. Um, for Mentor Connect, we want the proposing institution to be a two-year college. We've actually had one situation where it was went in as what they call a collaborative proposal, which was uh, a 50-50 split between the community college and a university. But typically, we like for the community college to be the one that submits the proposal. Um, but for the ATE program overall, there are no restrictions. Well, I say no, but they're high schools, universities, two-year colleges, and, and a number of other entities are eligible grantees. But um, as Greg pointed out, there will need to be two-year college leadership, and the small grants for institutions new to ATE is really targeting two-year colleges. Uh, part of the goal for this funding track is to build capacity at two-year colleges to to uh, be successful in writing grant proposals and getting grant funding. Um, and so there, there is a, a capacity building leadership development piece in that small grants that's sort of embedded in that. So um, it's really the focus. But uh, those two-year to four-year, I mean, um, high school to two-year college uh, pathways for students are extremely important uh, to technician education programs and um, a good proposal between a high school and a, and a two-year college um, would be a great idea. Yeah, thanks. And then I think there's another question that asked, um, can Mentor Connect provide any feedback on proposals to small programs to be submitted this year? Well, uh, we do have a help desk and <laughs> I am notorious for not knowing how to say no. <laughs> so if uh, if you reach out, I can almost promise you that we will do something to help you. Um, since time is short, uh, we can't really assign a, a, a full mentor to uh, an effort at this point in time as a general rule. Um, we, uh, we are working with MNT uh, on one special circumstance trying to, to, to try this new model out of co-mentoring. Um, but um, we want you to submit, we want you to be successful. And if you put a proposal in and are not successful the first try, you just didn't start soon enough or we just can't get, you know, uh, enough help is not available between now and October the 1st to, to make it competitive, um, then you become eligible for second chance mentoring. So it's really a, a win-win situation. It's, it's, the main thing is to get the experience of writing and submitting a proposal. These are not easy proposals. There are a lot of moving pieces. I don't want to scare you off, but um, there, you know, it just takes a while to get good at it, and the more help you have to do that, the better. Yeah, no, thanks. And I think that one thing is, um, you know, with with the new national center, we are going to be trying a, a little bit unique model with Mentor Connect. And so, one thing I would, you know, reach out to the the Micro Nanotech Education Center and you know, send us an email. Um, and if there is a way that we could work with you and, and help you in this next grant cycle, you know, we would like to try and um, try and do that. So, you know, we are trying to kind of develop this new mentoring mo model in partnership with Mentor Connect through the National Center. So, uh, you know, feel free to contact us and, and we'll try to help you as much as we can. <laughs> 